when we are talking about the genetic code engineering, we are mainly also concerned with the possibilities about the uh, applications. And uh, when we look at the table of the genetic code, we see that nature uses uh, basic 20 building blocks to build the proteins. Side chains of these building blocks are, however, of quite limited chemistries. These limitations nature overcome on two way, in two ways. One way is simply to make co-translation modifications or introductions of some quite exotic amino acids like selenocysteine or pyrolysine. On the other hand, there is one much evolutionary, much more advanced process which we call post-translational modifications. These post-translational modifications, uh, the side chains of amino acids or built-in amino acids in the proteins are modified in almost all possible ways. We have different post-translation modifications ranging from phosphorylations, nitrations, cyborations, hydroxylations, ubiquitinations, biotinylations, glycosylations, and so on and so on. So it's obviously that uh, functional needs for life could be fulfilled through the whole series of these additional chemistries. And now it's a question from engineering of point of view why we need then genetic code engineering. We need genetic code engineering for at least three reasons. First reason is that post-translation machinery is highly complex. Nature do such special chemistries and such advanced chemistries normally in specialized places which we call compartments. These are these all processes are timely and spatially highly coordinated and um, uh, difficult to mimic. On the other hand, when we are interested in production of large quantities of homogeneous product, it's also difficult to do or to shape or to tailor particular post translation and modification. And last but not least, many of the recognition features of polypeptides which are important for post translation modifications are destroyed during expression or during this work with the peptide or with the proteins. For that reason, it would be much more easy to make some reassignment of the codons or to introduce specifically uh, particular amino acids which we could then later chemically, in a bi-orthogonal manner or some other manner, manipulate or change or direct in one uh, desired way. Certainly, muscle proteins uh, or sticky proteins or adhesive proteins from sea muscles are best example where we can illustrate all these principles. Muscles are living in dynamic environment in sea and they are sticking on the stones. However, to stick on the stone in such dynamic environment, it is uh, necessary that this adhesion process is controlled and that it is not on one side too rigid, on the other side not too weak. For that reason, muscle developed an ingenious strategy to stick on the stone uh, by using whole cocktail of the proteins. These proteins are normally having adhesive functions, some of them having matrix function, and some of them having coating function. And with this cocktail, muscle succeed to keep effectively or efficiently in a particular environment on the stones or on similar object. So if we are now interested to understand, or if we want to understand how this actually works on the molecular level, we could isolate and it's actually it's already done. Um, each of these particular protein analyze and look at the, at the level of single amino acid. And what we will find, we will find that there are many repetitions of amino acids like proline or tyrosine. And indeed, the, all these prolines or majority of these prolines and tyrosines are hydroxylated. That's mean post-translationally modified. And only this additional chemical functionalization enables muscle to have these specific adhesive uh, properties. So uh, if you look of all these tyrosines, they are containing DOPA or catechol moiety, and this catechol moiety is known from classical chemistry, classical chemistry that uh, as a good uh, 
is a good coordinator of metal ions. Among the amino acids which are dominating in, in chemical composition of muscle proteins are uh, tyrosine, proline, lysine and serine. But in chemical analysis of this uh, composition, as you already uh, talked, um, tyrosine is replaced by modified amino acids, DOPA and uh, proline by hydroxyproline, lysine by hydroxylysine or serine by um, phosphoserine. And if we see at a particular composition, we will see that, let's say, all these adhesive proteins contains lots of DOPA, or let's say coating proteins contains lots of proline or hydroxylated prolines. And now, uh, for us, is a um, essential question is first academical question: how these uh, materials enable the sticking of the muscle on the particular environment, and second is how we can manipulate or how we can produce this uh, material in laboratory in a very efficient way. So here we see just an uh, example how this it works. So if you have on rock surface, for example, metal ions or if you have anions like some oxides and so, you will see, let's say that this uh, cutter hole could be in oxidized and reduced form, that means semi-quinone or quinone form or uh, dehydroxylate form. And uh, in this uh, interesting cycle, we can have a reduction, that means a redox, highly controlled redox process, which enables us uh, adhesive surface binding. This binding could also take place in the, in the bulk through the so-called cohesive coupling. For us, these materials could be of high interest because they are bioglues of high industrial and therapeutic potential major challenges for production of this adhesive is they should be non-toxic, they should enable us a strong bonding, but this strong bonding should take place in wet environment. Our blood is like a sea, uh, salty and wet, and we should have actually bioglue exactly in this environment. And for that reason, we could also think about applying of the synthetic amino acid and engineered genetic code to produce such uh, biologically highly relevant materials. We did some interesting preliminary experiments where we just take one hybrid uh, muscle protein combination between food protein 1 and food protein 5 Food protein 1 is coating protein containing lots of proline, where food protein 5 is uh, adhesive protein, and the, this interesting chimera contains 6 repeats or with a proline rich thicknesses. So, what we did, we did a preliminary experiment and we could show that indeed the incorporation of hydroxylated proline is uh, possible. At this level, we can provide only proof of principle. We see that in principle it works, but there is still a lot of work to rescale this process to the amounts that could be uh, useful for application. But interestingly, beside this practical aspect, we also uh, realize that chemical composition of this analog also influences efficiency of the recombinant production. We can see that chirality of proline analogs is actually directly related with the productivity. This means only uh, so-called R um, hydroxylation or R fluorination uh, reveals or gives results or gives uh, product where is a wrong chirality of this modification does not allow a protein translation at all. This is of course very interesting translational effect and this is most probably one of the fundamental features of protein translation that we should uh, still illuminate. With this, we just provided first proof of principle that it, is a, it should be possible to recombinantly express modified adhesive proteins. And we provided the first step toward the production of these valuable biomaterials. I would like to thank to my co-worker, uh, my PhD student Matthias Heuchel, 
whose results are in part presented here.